we have with us today, um, Bloody Kev. Hey, all right. Hey. Hi. <laughs> he hey. is a novice of the Illuminates of Fanatoros, a expert um, musician, <laughs> and a <laughs> yeah. fantastic artist. Cheers. Welcome, Kev. Hello, how are you doing? I'm doing all right. Me too. Good, good. good it's good, good to be here. Thank you. Um, what are your bands called, Kevin? Uh, my bands presently are, I have one who are actually based in Stockholm in Sweden and they are called Diagnosis Bastard. Wow. And, <laughs> I have one ba <laughs> and I have one in London and they are called Atavistic Death Pose. Atavistic spelt with a K though to make it a bit more punk. <laughs> <laughs> Well, I, ho uh, yeah. I hope I get to see one of them one day. Yeah, I'm sure you will yeah. at some point. Obviously, we're uh, we're not doing anything like everybody else at the moment. We'll have to rework that out when things get up and running, see how gigs go, because we don't know, do we? Um, so could you, could you tell us a bit there, how, how you first heard about Chaos Magic and the Illuminator for Nataros? OK, I'll, um, I'll probably tell you a bit more of the story about how going to magic, cause, and, then, and then we'll get on to that, if that's cool. Yes, cool. uh, so yeah, as a kid, I was into for some reason. I was into all things horror and stuff like that. I had rubber skeletons hanging up on the walls all over. If you look at any photos of me, they're there. Stuff's not really changed actually. And uh, yeah, and I'd sneak down and watch the Hammer horror films and all that kind of mm -hmm. stuff. And then uh, Christmas time, I can't remember seventies sometime. I got I've got the book here to show you. I got this book for Christmas, oh. which is called the Encyclopedia of Horror. And that was my Bible for ages, particularly <laughs> the Devil's Army section about witchcraft and stuff. Yeah. And I remember getting that. And then a bit later, I got that uh, book, Devil and His Works, the Dennis Wheatley one. And I was fascinated with all that stuff in there. And especially I came across the little picture of uh, Livy's Baphomet in there. And I was drawing that on books and all this stuff for years. And... Um, yeah, and at school, I wasn't really interested in school stuff. I'd go in the library and get books about this kind of stuff. <laughs> uh, and then, of course, I get a little bit older and I discover music and heavy metal comes along. Mm -hmm. I'm into Ozzy, so I hear about Mr. Crowley. I get the Venom album, Welcome to Hell, this kind of stuff. So that really influences me through that point. And a bit later on, I get into goth music and I'm following around around the country. I follow that band Fields and Nephilim around. We used to hitch around all over. Mm -hmm. And his lyrics are very about Philema and Chaos Magic, so mm -hmm. I start to wear stuff there. And we were going up to Leeds to see them a lot. There seems to be a lot of gigs going up there. And I remember when we were there, we'd pop into loads of shops. I remember going to Sorcerer's Apprentice. I think it was the one on Hyde Park Corner. It was like yellow colour yeah. at the time. So, you know, we were in and out there a lot. And um, and another shop, like a incense shop up near the station. I don't know if that was Ray Sherwin's shop, but we used to go in there a lot at the time. So I was seeing this stuff then, like copies of Chaos International and stuff like that. But, you know, I wasn't really making much connections to it. And I moved out of my house at home, sorry. And I moved to Brad live in Bradford in the 90s. Mm -hmm. And I was living with just like some anarcho punks there who I didn't know. And they had a lot of visitors, I think, mainly because he was a speed dealer. But anyway, so these guys just come around, punks and stuff. And there was a, there was a certain element of those guys who were a bit different and a bit sort of you know, into their magic and stuff like that. And again, I, they, I used to see copies of, they'd bring copies of Chaos International around and stuff like this. And, you know, I'd seen the Chaos Star itself for years, getting into punk music and stuff like that. Um, so I was there for a year or so, and then I moved to Nottingham. And again, I was living with some people there who were part of the Temple of Psychic Youth. Um, and a lot of interesting characters. And I never practiced any of this stuff myself I was just aware of it and it was always around me uh, and I got a funny little story I was in the 90s I went to Christiania in Copenhagen the free town there and I was uh, I was on a bus on tour with a band and I was just sat on a bus on my own and uh, we'd eaten too much hash cake and I was having a serious meltdown on the back seat and these two girls got on bald head girls and came and sat on either side of me and they were like hello we are witches we are chaos witches. And I was like, it weren't doing me much good, this. And one of them touched me on the heart and she said, the chaos is now within you. Shit myself anyway. But <laughs> I still don't know who they were to this day. But it's, it really stuck with me and it probably freaked me out, obviously. Um, yeah. Anyway. So I'm back. I'm living in Nottingham. 
and that's mostly just my music scene and that flies by anyway and i didn't really discover this stuff till i moved to london in late 99 because suddenly i've got the great bookshops around you know i've got treadwells and watkins and stuff like this and i could see all this going on and i was I'd go and see go to see some talks and some workshops up in the castle in farrandern and all this and i remember then seeing I went and saw a Dave Lee one and I saw a Julian Vane one as well and was really impressed with that stuff. Um, you know, so I could see what Chaos Magic was about there. And um, I had a friend at the time, this dancer girl, and she had a copy of Principal Discordia. Mm -hmm. And we were looking at that and she was looking at that to do some dance stuff. And I saw and it, that kind of led us on to uh, Libra Chaos and Psychonaut, and we found that. Yeah, and it, it really, really struck a chord with me, that book. And, and my band at the time, actually, we used the, uh, the the Chaos Star, what is it, the Alphabet of Desire thing mm. as a T-shirt design. Great shirt. Mm. But um, yeah, so that was really, really cool. I started doing some courses and stuff like that and um, I remember doing a, an eight week course which was actually a Philema one um, and that was really good and it finished with a, a group getting together loosely mm -hmm. and it didn't really work out as it was but that taught me you know the idea of doing stuff every day so IOT mm -hmm. I was in Glastonbury at one of the occult conferences I can't even remember how long ago was it was like five years or something mm -hmm. I don't know and I, was, I saw you do some stuff there which was great it's one with a big Congo thing at the Congo yeah. thing at the end and that and I was like oh wow and uh and I had a quick chat with you and Kai I think it was in the after party and you told me about the thing in Sheffield manifestations mm -hmm. and I came down to that up to that rather and that really really impressed me especially saw her rise massive chaos bee that she did there fantastic stuff that yeah and that, and that really really got me you know like so yeah this is what i'm into for sure and um so i came back from that and i did start then coming to the circle things um and again everybody was really nice to me and and it was nice to see that you know the real eclectic mix of stuff going on um so yeah, I mean, so that's kind of how I found you, I think, because <laughs> as I say, I, c I can't think of a definite point when I realised what Chaos Magic was or where the IoT was. I, you know, I, I picked up a copy of, let's say, Libanol and that, and it mentions it all in there, obviously. Um, and then, yeah, and I've been coming to those circles ever since, as far as I can remember, uh, mm. and. And then to do, you know, and it, again, it never really struck me to actually join these any groups or anything until I think Kai and Sororosa said to me, why don't you apply for them? Like, oh, yeah, <laughs> why don't I, you know, <laughs> uh, since I'm coming anyway and doing these things. Yeah. Like for a long time, for many years, this stuff always seems so far mm -hmm. away until you reach a group of people who are involved in it. You, mm -hmm. yeah, I don't think you can always feel like you can get involved yourself you know and that's the same in the DIY underground music scene I'm into I think if you don't discover it somewhere it, you can very easily just overlook some of these things you know what I mean um yeah and I think I remember you were uh, coming to our circles for quite some time before you yeah joined. quite a while now yeah 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 mm -hmm. quite a long time I mean I was coming for quite a while before I even start to do the yeah the novice work uh, which I've been doing since what September now and obviously yeah. we're on a bit it's expanded out now because of what's <laughs> going on at the moment I mean it'd be nice to uh, it'd be really nice to try and move on when we get back on the ground again you know so how have you found the program yeah uh, very useful you know the I've been doing a bit of the of kind of meditation and stuff anyway mm -hmm. in the past with a good friend of mine we used to go down the Buddhist center and things like that yeah. So, you know, so I had some experience in this stuff and it, yeah, as I said, I think earlier, it, I find it great for setting like a, a groundwork for everything else. I read in one of Julian's books the other day, how he described the center of the chaos star as being still. And, you know, 
a bit like a clean slate and you can place everything on that. Mm. Um, but yeah, I'm finding it pretty good so far. Um, I think I'm getting on fine with it. Doing the diary, which is obviously very important. Mm -hmm. um, yeah, I think I'm progressing fine through that. Um, and I'd recommend it to anyone, really, any mm -hmm. other novices who want to come along. Be yeah, that, I remember it being quite a, an experience and I've, I've redone it a few times since. Yeah, yeah, but yeah, yeah. Yeah, you know, I've still got quite a way to go for sure, I think. Um, that's why it'd be nice to physically see some people again and discuss it properly. I mean, I can discuss it over these formats, obviously, as well. But, uh, and, you know, and getting a mentor and stuff's obviously very helpful. Someone you can approach about these things. It makes a lot of difference. Thank, thank you for sharing your story with us. That's it's all right. Sorry about the uh, weird interruption in the middle. <laughs> well, that's not a problem. But yeah. I found your story really fascinating. Yeah, yeah. As I say, you know, I could expand on it a lot. I think if, but then I'd be going off on tangents about music and all all sorts like mm -hmm. that. But you know, I was trying to keep it into this framework really. Mm -hmm. I hope that was all right for you. That was fantastic. Thank you very much. And we will see yeah. you later on. See you later tonight, yes, on the uh, Zoom meet. Great. Thank you very much.